Hi guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury Channel. Guys, I want to talk to you today, it's very, very important. Man cannot live on Google Ads alone. I depend on your support to keep me on YouTube full time. Guys, there's a number of ways you can help me stay on YouTube producing content. Number one, you can organize a paid review. That's right. I will make a video for US $20 minimum and I will review your collection. I'll answer a question for you. Um, so, you know, normally takes, uh, normally, you know, about 14 days, 10 to 14 days for me to make these vids. The other thing you could do to sponsor me and help me stay full time on YouTube is sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay a small amount of money, like a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, anything, any amount you want over a dollar, you can, and it basically sends a dollar each month to me. Now, you can cancel at any time if you're sick of the show or you don't like me anymore. Uh, so, guys, 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 help keep me full-time on YouTube. Paid reviews, I do. Sponsor me on Patreon, and Patreon people get advanced screening of some videos and secret videos. Not to mention, i got advertising space on the fridge. Come on, guys, keep me full-time on YouTube. Hello, I'm Archibald Chesterfield III, and today... Today we're on the Archie Luxury channel discussing wristwatch, wristwatch dilemmas. And today I want to talk about a really interesting proposition. The Rolex, the Rolex Daytona versus the Breguet Type 20 chronograph. Now this is a very interesting comparison. So we're going to compare these two fantastic chronographs and uh, we're going to talk about them on the Archie Luxury channel. So uh, let's let's discuss it. So firstly we've got the Rolex Daytona. The Rolex Daytona it's been out for a long time. It's got a uh, long history of motor racing. Paul Newman! Paul Newman! Yes he wore a Paul Newman. He wore the Daytona and <clears throat> he went for a dial combination which was a bit exotic which became known as the Paul Newman Daytona highly collectible highly desirable the Paul Newman and um, it's it's interesting the Rolex GMT went from a four digit uh, reference code to when they went sapphire <clears throat> in the 80s it um, <clears throat> they gained went from a manual wine to an automatic and it gained the Zenith, the Zenith movement, the Zenith, Zenith famous for its El Primero. Well, they sold a version to Rolex, which Rolex then hand finished, and and uh, they then Rolex then released their own movement. <clears throat> so it's an interesting chain of events there. And we've got a brand like Breguet, Breguet themselves there, Breguet. Well. <clears throat> What did Rolex use in their plastic Daytonas, the Paul Newmans? Well, they used a Valjoux 727. Well, guess what? Breguet, Breguet, they, they were building a chronograph in the 1950s for the French Navy Air Force. Aeronautical, which was a division of the Navy, which later became the Air Force. They got a contract to, it was referred to as the Type xx type 20 contract it needed to fit certain criteria is the watch needed to be a certain size it needed to have certain um chronograph functions it needed certain things it needed to be a flyback flyback quite interesting um uh, and breguet designed this piece and um breguet then they uh Everything old is new again. In the uh, late 90s, Breguet relaunched the Type 20. And it's... Uh, Breguet then became part of the Swatch Group. And it's grown from strength to strength. The interesting thing is, both these pieces, if you were to buy a, a Rolex Daytona, if you could get one retail, which isn't that easy... And if you were to buy a Breguet new in store, they were roughly the same price. This was pre-ceramic pre pre Daytona. 
pre-ceramic Rolex Daytona days. So now the uh, the Rolex Daytona is actually more money than the Breguet, but there was a point when they were eye for eye, tooth for a tooth. They were they were a same price combo deal. So I I think this is a great comparison, and uh, I got a really good friend of mine in Sydney. Sydney, he's a real real cool guy, um, and he actually does have. He's got two Daytona pre ceramic, two steel Daytona, a white dial and a black dial. He's also got an Amiga Speedmaster Man on the Moon and a Breguet Type 20. And the funny thing is, he doesn't think the Breguet is so far inferior to the Daytonas. He loves his Daytonas, but he loves his Breguet. So let's let's have a bit of a discussion on it if we are comparing these pieces. So I'm going to, for the argument in this video here, we're going to compare pre-ceramic steel and two-tone Daytona. We're going to compare it to the Bregster, the Breguet Type 20. And this is this is a very interesting comparison. We'll we'll compare the two and uh, we'll see what is the better chronograph itself. There, what is the better one to have? Well, guys, I gotta tell you honestly, looking at the Rolex Daytona, the pre-ceramic, I gotta say this is a very very perfect watch. You've got a steel case. I think the steel bezel is actually better. Why would you put a ceramic bezel on when it can it can be so easily damaged? Isn't steel better than ceramic? I don't know. Call me old-fashioned. Call me whatever you want. I'm the pontiff. I can say what I want. But uh, I got to tell you, the Daytonas themselves, they're highly collectible, highly desirable. In fact, the uh, Daytona is probably the hottest hottest wristwatch in the world it is one of the hottest wristwatches in the world everyone wants one very limited supply very very fickle fuckers very fickle very fickle hard to get hard to get and we look at the daytona it's wonderfully very well executed uh nicely done but i gotta tell you the truth i think an Explorer 2 and a Daytona, I don't see huge steps up in quality. I don't see the huge step up, which justifies the huge price def differential for these two pieces. We take a look at the Breguet, the Breguet Type 20. And, you know, there are purists in the Breguet brand who say, well, that's not a real Breguet. A real Breguet has got to be... Uh, big, big, huge money. But I, I don't see it. I think the Breguet Type 20 fits nicely in the range. They've got the Marine. They've got some Breguet models which, you know, aren't that... On the secondary market, they aren't that much more than the Breguet Type 20. I like the Type 20 not as a cheap Breguet, but as a beautiful chronograph. That's the reason I got my Type 20. I didn't see it as a cheap Breguet. I saw it as a beautiful chronograph. And the Breguet itself, they're highly polished. If you get the bracelet version, highly polished, beautiful. It's, it is really a dress watch, which you would expect from Breguet the Mark there. It's got Typical Breguet hallmarks, um, coin edged case. It's got the Breguet beautiful, beautiful numerals, Art Deco numerals, beautiful pushes. Uh, the rotating bezel is very nicely done. Uh, it's really quite a, a piece of jewelry, really wonderful thing. It's using a Lamania, see. Breguet itself there uses Lamania. Now, Lamania, hey, Patek used Lamania in many of their watches. The 3970, it uses a Lamania perpetual, perpetual calendar chronograph. 
Uh, Lamani is a very famous movement maker, and uh, now that um, Brega is in the Swatch group, there Lamani supplies a movement for the. This is a unique movement for the Type Twenty. It's a well-respected movement, automatic, uh, with a date or a non-date version. Chronograph, automatic chronograph. Uh, it is actually, it's not a column wheel. They've, 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 they didn't use a column wheel, which, you know, it, uh, I, I, you know, the, the, the column wheel is a big thing. Yes, I grant you column wheel is a big thing, but it's still a beautifully presented, beautifully made. It's not a, not a Valju 7750 movement. This is a, a Lamani. It's a higher grade movement. It's a flyback chronograph. It's well done there. What do I think of these two? Well, I would have to say the Breguet is more of a dress watch, highly polished, a little bit more delicate, even though it's finely done. It is so finely done. I think the Daytona is more robust. It's more in keeping with the Rolex tool watch theme. The Rolexes themselves, the Daytona is really a fashion watch. It's no longer a tool watch. It's bought by tools instead of being a tool itself. It's bought by tools instead of being the tool watch itself. Um, I think the two watches, the Breguet, the Breguet Type 20, and the uh, Daytona, the steel Daytona pre-ceramic, I think they are both beautiful stunners there beautiful stunners i mean investment wise you'd have to go rolex daytona rolex daytona but from an aesthetic and from a beauty point of view i think the breguet's got the edge i think the breguet is a more beautiful watch uh the heritage of breguet just how the whole thing is done with conservatism and pomp and ceremony i mean breguet they um the family they were watchmakers they moved from france to switzerland they then became aircraft manufacturers breguet makes aircraft i mean what a pilot's watch what a just a fantastic history and legacy to have there so the breguet itself comparing it to the daytona yes if i had a choice if someone said to me pick one pick one pick one archie you can have one and there was a breguet and there was a steel daytona i'll take the bloody steel daytona but if you asked me if you asked me um archie boy um which one do i like more aesthetically and beauty wise i would have to say the breguet I think the Breguet is beautiful. The highly polished surface, the coin edging, the rotating bezel, the numerals, the numerals are to die for. They're absolutely beautiful. They're to die for. So I gotta say, financially, I'd always pick the Daytona, <clears throat> but with my heart, I would pick the Bregster, the Breguet. Just a beautiful sports chronograph. From a wonderful heritage and lineup, the Breguet Type 20. What a wonderful piece. A wonderful piece for just to enjoy and love and lust after and hoard and possess. I'm Archie Luxury comparing the Breguet Type 20 to the Rolex Daytona. Tell me what you guys... Tell me what you guys think of that. Please, guys, man cannot live on Google Ads alone. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel.
face. Okay. 